We start today with Dr. Tom Knopp, a gastroenterologist with colorectal surgery and gastroenterology associates. Colorectal cancer will impact 1 in 16 Americans, and he is fighting against this common cancer through screening, education, and treatment. The next question is to establish your risk and then take the steps to get screened. One of the biggest determinants of risk is your family history. Well, you know, colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States for men and women. Uh, so it's extremely common and it's important to get screened because the first symptom of colon cancer is no symptom at all. A lot of times once the symptoms occur, the colon cancer is actually more advanced. Uh, so it's kind of why screening becomes a really a big important uh, part of the picture. Now, if you look at the incidence of colon cancer over time, and if you look at it, say on a graphic, um, you know, the incidence stays about you know zero one percent all the way until you get about forty, and then at forty it starts to slightly climb, and then at fifty we see a kind of a big peak. So that's why uh, fifty is the year of age that we recommend screening begin for average risk individuals. Now there are certain select individuals that need to be screened earlier and that's important to discuss your family history and, and, and other things with your primary care physician or your gastroenterologist and they can determine when screening should start for you. But the average, uh, the average um, uh, risk person starts at 50 years of age. If you have any questions as far as your family history, discuss that with your primary care doctor. Your primary care doctor is usually going to make recommendations of, you know, uh, where to go as far as, you know, if it's our place here at CSGA or another gastroenterologist or colorectal uh, person in, in town, they'll get you set up with that. A lot of people they come in open access. Actually, they're talking to the primary care doctor. This might be the first time that we meet them is right here in this room before their procedure. Other people, they come and visit us in the office uh, for other reasons, and we might identify a risk factor that, that, that brings them in uh, that would qualify them for screening. The screening test of choice is called a colonoscopy. This is a procedure in which a camera is advanced through the colon to inspect for any lesions, masses, polyps, or other areas of concern. This test is the gold standard, and though many people fear the test itself, most report the worst part is actually the preparation. We gotta get you cleaned out so we can see. The, 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 the scope um, that we use, the camera on the end of the scope is quite small, so you can kind of see in the, the channel that we use the, to remove materials is, is very small. So in trying to get you know, uh, a thick liquid or a solid through that, you can see why we can't get much done. So it's really important if you're going to take the risk of the procedure, which is small, but there is some risk, it is a procedure. If you're going to take those risks, uh, you want to give us the best opportunity to really screen your colon appropriately and see every inch that's available to be uh, screened. But once you get to the office, the procedure typically moves very quickly. The procedure, once we get you nice and sleepy, takes about 15 to 20 minutes to do, and then we have you on your way out, out for lunch with your family. A patient allowed us to observe and film his colonoscopy in order to help educate and promote prevention. Dr. Knopp walked us through the colonoscopy. After advancing the full length of the colon, he was able to identify a familiar structure as well as a polyp. This polyp is probably only about four or five millimeters in size. It's not very big. It's the reason we do the exams is to get these kind of things off of here before they become cancers. The traditional polyp, the, or what we call an adenoma or polyp, the cancer sequence, carcinoma sequence, it theorized to take about 10 years. So something like this polyp here, you know, probably take about 10 years before this polyp became a cancer, but on people with uh, routine screening, we're doing them every 10 years, so and that's really one of the theories on that. If you do have polyps, it does increase your risk a little bit to have polyps on further examination, so what we do is we, we bring people back a little bit earlier. So if you were to have a few polyps on your initial colonoscopy, uh, your endoscopist might advise you to come back in three to five years based upon the pathology results. But if you have any one polyp greater than 10 millimeters, which is um, you know, about it's a centimeter in size. So any one polyp greater than one centimeter in size, or three or more smaller polyps, we bring people back in three years uh, for their follow-up examination. And just as quickly, it's time to get rid of that polyp with a device called a snare. And we trap the polyp with the snare and close down on that. And what you'll see is the snare gather the tissue underneath the polyp, and then we'll go ahead and make sure we got a hold of it nice and tight and it goes right through. And that's basically your traditional polypectomy. It's this really small polyp. Yeah, you can put the trap on now. We may have a trap. We suck it up through the scope here 
and then it'll send, be sent off to the pathologist for evaluation. Fortunately for our patient, that was the only polyp found. This not only decreases the risk of cancer, but also can help the patient rest at ease that he is most likely in the clear until his next screening. That polyp there is very small and not worth getting stressed out over. It's one of the things that we, by screening, you can alleviate yourself of that stress and not knowing what's going on. You know, that polyp again 10 years from now could have been in cancer, but you don't have to worry about that anymore. As he completed the colonoscopy, Dr. Knopp stressed some of the keys to a quality exam and what to look for in the physician performing your procedure. When you're going to get your endoscopic procedure done, that you're going to get a high quality examination. So, you know, the endoscopists we, today, you know, they, they should be keeping track of their withdrawal times, their polyp detection rates, uh, their complication rates. Um, all these things are important to make sure you're getting the highest of quality exams. So it's important for our community and it's important for you as a patient to have this procedure done by somebody that's uh, really uh, has documented and can prove that they're, they're providing a real high quality of service. Colon cancer impacts men and women, representing one of the most common causes of cancer and cancer-related death. Getting your screening performed will significantly decrease that risk and potentially save your life. More Stanton MD coming up. Stay with us.